In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can create plastic looking text in Photoshop. You're welcome. Hello, creative. It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. But first, how would you like a cheat sheet? Hmm? Head over to graphicsgirl.com and get your free Photoshop cheat sheet. It'll show you all the shortcuts in the program, whether you're on a PC or Mac. Just click the link below. If you have a large monitor and want to increase your view, you can zoom in by doing Command or Control Plus. You can see the magnification that you're zoomed in at in two places. Up here where it says your title bar for your file, it'll have your percent magnification as well as your color modality. And you'll also see it down here in the lower left hand corner. So you'll want to bring your colors back to the default, which are the colors that you see at the bottom of your toolbar on the left hand side. You'll want it to be black white so you can hit D. For example, if I double click my colors down there and choose a different color and click OK, you can see now that it has red and white. By clicking D on my keyboard, it brings it back to black and white. Next, we're going to want to fill this entire background with black. There are a couple of ways to do it, but the quickest way would be using your shortcuts. On a Mac, you'll hit Option Delete, and on a PC, it's all backspace to fill it with your new foreground color. Now that we've filled it with a color, it's always a good idea to save your file. You can see if it says untitled, you haven't saved your file. So you'll come to File, Save. From the Format dropdown, we're going to go ahead and save it as your default Photoshop file. With our three character extension of PSD there, we're going to change this name to say Plastic. All right, let's do this. First step would be to get some text, and we do that with our type tool. We're gonna choose the default horizontal type tool. Before clicking down to set some text, we're gonna hit X on the keyboard to bring the white to the foreground. So you'll click down and begin typing. I'm gonna type out the word plastic. And when you set text in Photoshop, you can see that the contextual menu at the top changes to have the font, point size, paragraph alignment. So from the drop down, I'm going to choose a rounded font. This one that I have called Simply Rounded. You can download fonts for free generally from dafont.com, but you know, be careful, use your judgment. Always best to pay for fonts if you're worried about corruption. So now I want to change maybe the point size to make it larger. I'll say something like, do something that will 500 points here. And you can move your text with the move tool, the first tool of your toolbar. When you have your text selected with the move tool, you can also change the size of your text just by going to one of the corners to get the double headed arrow, holding shift down and increasing it. Okay, so you don't need to know the point size of your text when you go to set it. So when you set text in Photoshop, it automatically creates a brand new layer for the text. You can see here in my layers panel that you can load in uh, with this icon in your toolbar or you come to window layers. You can see that the text layer looks like this, and it will generally name that layer the text that you typed out. At the bottom of your layers panel are layer effects. If you click that, you can see all of these layer effects. The one that we want is called color overlay. So we'll click on the color block to the right of the blend mode. So go ahead and grab yourself a new color here Go ahead and grab yourself a new color. I'm going to go for like a light blue type color. We haven't changed the color of the type. This is just a color overlay on top of it. Looking at your layers panel again, you can see your layer effects. 
They can be turned on and off once you're out of your layer style dialog box. But we're gonna add a couple more effects here. The next one that we're gonna add is inner glow. If you're already in your layer style dialog box, you don't need to click OK and come back and add it. You can add multiple effects at the same time. So when you check off the effect that you want to be in, it will bring up those attributes on the right hand side. What we're going to do here is create like an interior shadow for the inside of the text. And while they do have an inner shadow effect that you can do, there's more attributes for the inner glow. And that's why I use that one. Here from the blend mode, you could change this to be multiply. Multiply allows the background to come through just a little bit. And instead of white, we can choose a darker shade of the hue that you chose. I went with blue, so I'm just gonna go with like a slightly darker shade of blue. All of these aspects can be modified later. So it won't be until you increase the size that you'll start to see this effect. You can see it now on my screen a little bit more. Obviously, if you have, let's say black, you can really get that effect. But technically speaking, a shadow isn't just black or gray. It's just a darker hue of the color that you have. So maybe I'll make the opacity something like 50. You can type in the fields as well as using the slider. The choke shows you how crisp that shadow will be. So we want to go for subtlety. So go ahead and play around with what looks good to your eye. We want it pronounced, but not too harsh. Jitter adds a texture to it, which is not what we're going for in this effect. And range just once again shows you the extent to which the contour or the difference between light and dark. I'm gonna make mine nice and soft. Again, I'll go with something like 50. So next, we wanna add bevel and emboss. So it's right here called gloss contour that we wanna add in some more contours that don't seem to come with the original default. You'll choose this little settings icon here and it's all the way at the bottom where it says contours. When you click that, Photoshop will ask you if you want to add or replace. So we're going to choose append. Now you can see you have all of these from which to choose. Sometimes it's easier to show these thumbnails as a larger list. So you can see the name. And the one that we're going to look for is this one. Ring triple. Go ahead and choose that. Now let's do our settings. You can already see our text behind the box here. I'll go like that <laughs> so you can see it. Scroll down a little bit. You can see it modified because I have preview checked. Also, feel free to move your dialog box around if you'd like to see the effect as well as your settings while you're working on it. So with my dialog box out of the way, and this is what looked good to my eye. This is the basic look that we're gonna go for. You can see here that the depth is around for me. I think I liked it at like around there, around like 126. So you can see these highlights come through. So your settings are gonna depend on the size of your text. This is the look that we're going for. So use your sliders so you can see what you're doing and make sure that you have it screen for your highlight mode and multiply for your shadow mode. The opacity is zero on the shadow and 100 on the highlight. You also can change the angle of your shadow. Here you'll want to have it be 120 degrees using a global light and 60 on the altitude. Most importantly, make sure you have anti-aliasing on. If without it, it looks a little rough. Next, we're gonna add contour. And from here, you're gonna choose the one that says shallow slope valley. And we're gonna play around with the range here. I think something 
in the neighborhood of like 85. Looks pretty good. What we're trying to do is really emulate the look of plastic, the shininess of it. Just play around with it based on the size of your text. Okay, this is really starting to come together. So we are done with our layer styles and we can click OK. So this is looking pretty good, but what we're gonna do now, we're gonna add a stroke or a little outline around each of the letters so that it really pops out this plasticky look. So to do that, we're gonna make a duplicate of the plastic layer. To do that, you could grab a layer and hover over the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers panel, or if you wanna to start to use your shortcuts, you could hit Command or Control J. We're gonna come down to our original plastic layer to add that stroke. So once again, we're gonna add a layer effect of stroke. So I'll move it down so you can see both. And here in the stroke, we're gonna make it, you can see in the preview here how it will look, maybe a little bit thinner, three points. And we wanna make sure that the position is outside. So you can really see here in your preview how that will look. But we don't want our stroke to be black. So by clicking on that color section again, we can move our color picker out of the way. And you'll see when you roll over into your workspace, it changes to an eyedropper icon. And we're gonna choose a color not as light as the inside and not as dark as the outside, because that's indiscernible, but something midway. What will really make this pop out is if we put a bevel on the stroke. So let's do that. So once again, we're gonna come back up to our bevel and emboss. And something that's really neat is in the bevel and emboss styles, not only can you do an inner bevel, but you can also do an emboss on the stroke. Once again, we're gonna change the gloss contour on this to be that shallow slope. So for my final settings here, I was just playing around with it. I wound up going with uh, 45 on my opacity with a screen of white for my highlight and black for my shadow because I have a black background and up here and the settings for my stroke emboss I wound up going with a size of about 130 and a softening of about 10 so you will use these sliders to play around with what looks good to your eye based on the size of your text on your screen so that's how you can create text that looks like plastic in Photoshop. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like. Okay. Share it with your friends. Hey. And please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand. Thank you.